be learning about filters. Filters are one of the most important concepts in Earth Engine. In long remote sensing work that you have done before, you'll start with a few images, right? You have, would have downloaded some images or somebody would give you some data and you'll analyze that. In Earth Engine, the workflow is opposite. You start with everything. You start with something called image collections, which are data sets like Sentinel-2. If you look at this data set that we looked at, the Sentinel-2 data, this one data set contains every image that the satellite has captured since 2015, everywhere on Earth, right? And you have that available to you. Now, you probably don't want, want to work with every image ever collected. You probably want to work with images for a certain time range, for your region of interest meeting certain criteria. So we learn about filters, how to take this data and filter it down to the images that you need. For this one, we're going to work with the level two data. So we'll switch to level two data now, Sentinel-2, and we'll work with that. One way is you can go to the data catalog, find the data, you can copy this snippet and use that in your data catalog, or you can start with the, you know, this uh, snippet here. We'll start with scratch. There's another way to import data into your code editor. You can see the search box here is called search places and data set. That means you can also search for data sets right from here. So I'm going to search for Sentinel-2. And you can see I have some data set matches. I can pick the data set here, Sentinel-2, Level-2. There are two versions. There is a regular version and there's a harmonized version. All of you should be using the harmonized version. This is not the HLS data. This is not harmonized Landsat data. This is just Sentinel-2 internally harmonized. Uh, there was a change in how they process the data. So uh, they give you this post-process data available as the harmonized data. So we pick this data, it's available here. You can read about it and you can click the import button here. And once you click import, you will see that you get a new entry in your code editor, which says var image collection. And this is referring to this particular data set. So we just search for it found the data and click the import button. So now in our script, we have a new variable called image collection, which is referring to this. I can come here and I can rename it. So I can give any name. So now we have this variable S2, which is referring to the entire Sentinel-2 collection. So we'll, we have that. Now let's say we'll apply some filters. We want to first filter this data set by day. Let's say I want images of uh, collected during the year 2019. I want all images from 2019. How do I select those from this collection? So we'll create a new variable for filter. We'll say Sentinel-2. Now, what function do I need to run? We need to use the Earth Engine API to run this filter. So when you are not sure what to do, you have the documentation available to you here. So in your code editor, we can go to the docs tab and there are different modules. So you can see we have an image collection. So I can go and say, this is e.image collection. These are all the functions that are available for me to run on any image collection. I can go and find the function that will allow me to filter. So just scroll down. You can see there is a function here saying that there's a function called filter which says apply a filter to this collection. So I can use this. It takes one argument. What is the argument? It says, oh, you take, you need a filter. This function will apply a filter, but you already need a filter. So let's see how we can create that. We can say s2.filter. And the argument to this function is a filter because you need to give a filter. This one is a capital filter. So I need to create a filter. How do I create a filter? Well, we have a whole module here called e.filter, which allows you to create different kinds of filters. So I want all of you to switch to docs tab, open the e.filter module, and find me a filter that will allow me to filter images collected during 2019. Go ahead and tell me which one is the right filter. Filter.a. So you can see here, this says, Filter a collection by date range. You get two arguments, start and end date. So you give a date as a start, give a date as an end, and you'll apply a filter. 
the important part to note here is that this end date is exclusive. Whatever date you give, that date will not be included in your filter. So let's learn how to use this filter. So I want to run this filter function. This needs a filter. So first I'll create a filter. So I'll create my date filter. How do I create a date filter? You just found this function, efilter.date. This takes a start and end date. I want filters, the, the date from 2019, all of the which I can do this. So supply filter from 1st end to 31st December, 2019. If I do it like this, 31st December won't be included. So if there was an image collected on 31st December, that image will not be part of this filter because the end dates are exclusive. So in Earth Engine, whenever you do your date filters, always add one to it. So the right way to do this will be this. This includes all images collected during 2019 up to the 1st Jan 2020. Okay, so we have our date filter and we can now say, I want all image apply this filter. And then the variable filter now has all images collected by the Sentinel satellites in 2019. The question is, is it JavaScript that is doing exclusive? No, it's not JavaScript. It's the Earth Engine API that uh, uh, makes it exclusive. I don't know what is in JavaScript. As I said, I don't know much of JavaScript. So um, in Earth Engine API, read the documentation. It says it's exclusive. So always add one to your date when using Earth Engine. Okay, so we applied this. So this function needs a filter. We created a filter and applied it. There's a shorthand way of doing this. We can just create it directly here. So you'll see a lot of code in Earth Engine. We'll just do things like this, right? It'll just say, take S2, apply filter, and it'll just create the filter right there. E filter date, and do the filter. Filter by location. I want all images collected in 2019 over my city, not just everywhere, right? So first we need to Take this and apply a filter. So I'll just create a new variable, filter do, and we'll say filter, the result of the previous filter. So this has all 2019 images. I'll apply one more filter. Please go and find me a filter. Can you look at the documentation? Go and find me a filter that I can use to filter this by a location. One of the most useful skills I want to teach you in this class is how to read and understand documentation. That's why, you know, I'll point you always to the documentation, read how the function is defined, find function. Once you learn that, you'll just be able to do so many things by yourself without even asking for help. E filter bounds says it will create a filter that passes if the object's geometry intersects the given geometry. So this function needs a geometry. We don't have a geometry yet. So let's create a geometry first. You can see in code editor, you have these tools here, these are the drawing tools. I'm going to take this, add a marker tool. I'm going to click here and drop a point over my city. So you can see what happened. You see one more import in your code editor. This is var geometry, a point. That means it created a new geometry, which we can use in our code. There's a question. If we have a shapefile of an area, how do we use that in a code? You can upload your shapefile. Earth Engine allows you to upload shapefiles and use them in your code. We're going to learn that in module three. So we're going to upload a shapefile and use that to do some analysis. For now, let's just drop a point and you can use that. Again, I'm going to show you we need a geometry. So I went here, dropped the marker over my city, and now I have this variable geometry, which I can use. So I can just apply this. Yeah. So now my filter two variable has all images that are collected over this point in 2019. Thanks for catching, it's been e filter bounds. Yeah, so we create a filter and use that. Next, let's see how to filter by metadata. Satellite imagery from an optical center, sensor such as Sentinel-2 are affected by clouds. If there are clouds in the atmosphere, you'll see clouds in your image, and that means if there is a very cloudy scene, you may, need, may not want to use them in your analysis. So let's learn. I want to images which have cloud cover less than 35%. So I want 
images which are not very cloud, maybe say let's say 30%, should have overall cloud cover of less than 30%. So how do I know which images have what cloud cover? Well, I can go to the image description, data description page, look at the image properties. Each image comes with this metadata. You can see there's one metadata called cloudy pixel percentage. This uh, has a number showing you how much is the cloud cover. So I can define my problem is I want images where this value is less than 30. So let's say I want to filter it. I'll take the previous result, filter two, I'll apply one more filter. Now I want to create one more filter here, which will allow me to select images, which are where the cloudy metadata pixel percentage is less than 30. Please go and find me a filter. Look at the documentation, see which filter will be appropriate to use here. So okay, there are a lot of filters with similar sounding names. This one greater than or equals to or less than, there is a filter which are used in joints. So this is not the correct one, but you want a similar one. So uh, let's see if, if there's another uh, answer. E filter metadata, but that's in red. I'm gonna click this and says deprecated. Do not use this, right? So though you found the correct filter, it says this is not in use. It suggests other filters to use, right? It says instead of this, use .eq, .gt, and the filter state like that. So the correct answer for this is, there's a filter called EE filter LT or LT, depending on your needs. We'll use LT, which says EE filter LT, two values, name of the property metadata and the value, and it filters to metadata less than the given value. So let's apply this filter here. So let's say EE filter, and everything is case sensitive. We know this, uh, the functions to create filters, they have this capital F on it. And this is the function that is small f. So make sure you are typing this in a correct way. This takes two values, the metadata. So this is a metadata and the value 30. And we can also put it over multiple lines, that's fine. Okay, so now we have filtered it. So now this filter three variable has all sentinel two images collected over this point in 2019 with cloud cover less than 30. Let's print it and see the results. And it gave me some result. I'm going to expand this and it says 29 elements. So if I expand this one, it found 29 images that were collected in during this year over this point, which matched my criteria. Let me expand it a little bit more. If you look at the IDs, you'll see all of these images are 2019. This one is 4th Jan, 9th Jan, 14th Jan, so every five days. I can expand each image, look at the properties, and you can see the metadata. This one is 0.29% cloud cover, so that's correct according to our criteria. If I expand another one, this one is also very less cloud cover. This one also is very less cloud cover and so on. So we found all the, the images which are less cloudy here. And we found all these images over this region. Uh, this question about uh, how did the API changes uh, why this function was deprecated? Uh, well, again, API evolves over time. Um, so again, they uh, keep changing. I don't think this is deprecated. I think this was deprecated maybe three or four years ago. So uh, maybe it's still in use. You can still make it work, but deprecated means it will soon uh, start throwing errors. Even data sets uh, keep getting deprecated. So again, you need to you know keep it up to date. Um, even recently, one of the big changes was the modis collections that were being used, they all got deprecated with a new version, which is better. Similarly, Landsat collections all got deprecated with a better version of Landsat uh, data, right? So again, uh, I think API and data sets evolve over time. We need to be updated with that. So this is great, but you can see this can be quite clumsy, right? You can say, I want to apply these filters. Typically, uh, in all your code, you'll apply at least two or three filters like this. And you have to keep track of all the variable names. Say, I, it's easy to make a mistake. I'll save it into filters. Maybe I use the wrong variable name and I'll make a mistake. So there's a shortcut. There's a meta syntax uh, to uh, make this work. So what JavaScript and Earth Engine API allows you to do is you can use something called chaining. So you can create multiple filters and apply them together in a single line of code. So let's see how this works. 
I want to apply this three filters to my data. So I'll start as usual. So I'll say, I'll take S2 and I'll write my code like this. Instead of ending my command with a semicolon, I'll say, I will not end my command. I will take the result of this filter and I want to apply one more filter on the result. So I'm going to take this and put it here. So you can see the command is still not over. It says S2, apply this filter, dot, apply this filter, and we'll say apply one more filter. And you can keep going how much ever you want, right? You can keep applying as many filters as you want. Once you're done, you can put semicolon and your result is done. So you can see we now have a very clean code where it started S2 and applied filters the both results are identical. You get the same results uh, by applying this. But this is much simpler, easier to use. Uh, so you can use any syntax that you like. Uh, this one is cleaner and you can apply that. And this is called chaining. The dot is the chaining operator. And you can chain multiple things together. So you can keep putting dot and adding new functions that will run on the result of the previous computation. So I'm going to remove this and keep this this will be the preferred way to apply filters in the engine. Finally, sometimes when you run this, you quickly want to see how many images uh, were there. So you can expand and say these are 29 images. You can also run this function called dot size, which will tell you what is the size of the collection. So you can see I printed filter dot size and it printed 29. So this is a more direct way to get this. And now you can say, Oh, I'm trying to figure out what is the best, uh, how much cloud cover should I use? If I do 10, I'll get 22 images. If I use 50, I'll get 35 images, right? So you can kind of quickly see how your filters affect the count of uh, images that you get. Uh, there's a question on the order of filters. If I apply one or the other uh, in a different order, does it affect the performance? No, it doesn't. The way our engine works, it, it creates a, a graph of all the processing that needs to happen and that graph is sent to the server. So regardless of the order, the computation graph will be similar and you don't uh, see any performance problems. Uh, the question is, can we download the images? Uh, that's coming up in script nine, export. You can export anything in your engine. You can download all images locally and do whatever you want. And again, one very useful use of Earth Engine is just to filter, apply some basic processing and download the data locally. So that is so painful to do it otherwise. So you can just use Earth to find data, filter it and download the results. So of course you can do it. Uh, there's a good question on if I have more study area and I want to filter together and save time. So uh, let's say I have two cities and I want to filter them together. So you can do two things. For example, you can have two points. So let's say I want to have, I can select this geometry and say, I want to drop one more point over another city here and run it. It'll just use both the points and apply a filter. You'll get images for both. You can see now I've got 58 images intersecting both this point and this point. Uh, more useful will be like you can upload a shape file of all the admin areas or watersheds and say, I want to filter to all the watersheds in this region or keep the list of watersheds. Uh, we'll learn how to do that uh, with uh, uploaded data sets uh, as well. Um, so a geometry can be points, lines, or polygons. It can also be multi points, multi lines, multi polygons. So this one is a multi-point, that means it's a list of points that are represented as a single geometry. You can also have a polygon as a geometry. So instead of dropping a point, I can draw a polygon. So I can draw a polygon and run this. You can see this one is a polygon. The geometry here is just the name of the variable. So I can just name it something. I can name it var AOI is this polygon. And then I'll use that same variable name uh, for filtering. So you can have points, lines, or polygons as your area of interest or as geometries. If you upload a shapefile, that also can be used as a geometry. 